you ever have the opportunity to make it all work, it's like the perfect storm. The ideal spot, ideal time of year, in the ideal moon phase. Holy mackerel. Whoa, would oh, you see that thing jump? This may be the best day of smallmouth fishing I've ever had in terms of big fish and numbers of them. Look at the size of these things. Oh my God. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks. Nothing works harder than a Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. The moon holds a very mystical place in the history of human culture. Since ancient times, full moons have been associated with odd or insane behavior, like sleepwalking, suicide, illegal activity, fits of violence, and of course, the dreaded werewolf. All of which have since been scientifically debunked. But when it comes to the full moon in fishing, I absolutely believe there is something to it. One of the most well-documented fishing facts is the frequency of big fish caught during the peak moon phases, especially during the full moon. A lot more big muskies, walleyes, and bass are taken right on the scheduled calendar day and continue for a three to five day stretch afterwards. Now we all know that the moon creates tides in Earth's oceans, some as high as 50 feet, which definitely would affect fish behavior in oceans and seas. But according to the experts, inland waters such as the Great Lakes and to some extent here on the St. Lawrence River, tides never exceed more than two inches and are therefore considered to be essentially non-tidal waters. Heck, more extreme fluctuations in lakes and river levels are produced by wind, barometric pressure changes, and man-made obstructions like dams and weirs. So why is there a lunar effect on these freshwater creatures? Well, I'm really not sure. But what I do know is when coupled with any one other perfect fishing condition, like falling barometer, cloudy sky, air temperature and water temperature close together, wind out of the southwest, and you're on prime smallmouth bass waters, well, my friends, the full moon is the warm milk on your Wheaties. I don't know what, it, oh yeah, that's a fish. I thought it was hung up in a clump of weeds. I started drifting off of some of these, uh, these nice open areas and then tighter into the weeds. <laughs> I thought I had a weed on, but, oh, a nice bass. Man, big. Look at him covered up with weeds. No wonder I thought I had weeds on. Got about an extra four pounds of weeds with him. Look at the size of that thing. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Easy, easy does it. Get in here, yes. Oh, beautiful, beautiful smallie. Look at the size of that thing. I barely had him hooked too. Look at this round the nose. Listen, we don't all have time to plan our fishing trips, don't get me wrong, but if you ever have the opportunity to make it all work, it's like the perfect storm. The ideal spot, ideal time of year, in the ideal moon phase. Holy mackerel. It, and this fish is freezing cold, by the way. I almost hate holding on to it here, but I don't want to just throw it in the water. Here you go, girl. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end, right to that point coming. I've never fished this part of the flat here, never. Never been on it before. So I'm curious now that that fish came out of that clump. Maybe we can pull one out of every clump to go by. Fish like that pretty much owns that one big weed bed as his. I don't think there's very many other smallmouth in this area that would challenge that fish for sure. They're very territorial, especially when it comes time to, f to feed. Mm-mm, they don't like to share. But could there be a fifth factor? I mean, is it even possible? Well, guess what? Absolutely there is. And it's an easy to detect factor that adds even more impact to an already explosive fishing situation. It's a change in the photo period, or in layman's terms, a change in season. Well, guess what? 
Today just happens to be the midway point between the autumn equinox and winter solstice. In other words, this week is the perfect storm of trophy bass fishing. All these factors combined really elevate big fish possibilities. It's this window of three to four days right after the actual moon peaks, full or new, that's the most likely time that the largest fish of any species are truly vulnerable to anglers. Another one. Oh, fatty. He's going mad. Drop shotting is typically a light line technique usually associated with bass, but can also be used for many other species. Having electronics on board is especially helpful with a surefire method for catching fish. The whole idea of this finesse technique is to keep the bait suspended off the bottom as you fish it with a slow retrieve. A drop shot specific hook is tied on gap up, leaving a tag end in the line as long as needed for bait suspension off the bottom. Finally, a drop shot weight is clipped on the tag end. Minnow, goby, and worm imitations are terrific for this technique. When fishing the drop shot, try imparting subtle actions to the bait, all while keeping the sinker in touch with the bottom. The slow undulations of this movement almost always trigger a bite. Talk to the pros at sale for more information about this effective way to catch fish. You'll notice that I'm actually casting out my drop shot rig, normally a vertical presentation for inactive fish. Well, that's because these smallies are so cranked up right now that if they sense my presence, they're actually spooking. So I need to put some distance between them and my boat. Another one. <sighs> Oh, fatty. <laughs> and he spit it out, too. Spit out my bait like they're all doing. Where are you? Can't even get a. Whoa. He's going mad. It's the moon. The mood makes, makes him crazy. I can lift you in. That's for sure. Easy. Oh, another fat one. Man, oh man. This is too much fun for one person to have. <laughs> I'm telling you. Way too much fun for one person. Same thing, look at the head on this fish. Now that fish would normally be, you know, maybe a two, two and a quarter pounds under normal conditions, but he's got the girth of a midsummer four, four and a half, five pound fish. <laughs> it's so cool. Got black spots on him like a lot of smallmouth do. That is so neat. Now he hit on a different color shad shaped worm I uh, went away from the wacky rigged Senko for a couple of casts and put on this goldy color shad shape worm. You know what? I really don't think it makes a whole lot of difference in terms of uh, colors. At this point, I think it's more profile and shape. And both of those offerings, the, uh, the shad shape worm and that wacky rigged Senko, both give it that, that uh, shad kind of a shape in the water as it twitches through. Fabulous. Go back and howl at the moon, baby. Something to keep in mind, drop shotting is not a one-dimensional presentation. It's extremely effective even when fish are active like they are here today. <sighs> Gotta drag him up over top of it. Oh, the weeds, come on, baby. There he comes. Or not. Maybe. I haven't seen this fish yet. Oh, that's a big fatty. Oh. 
Oh man, those are beautiful fish. Just gorgeous fish. Let's see how we can do this. Get in there. Thank you. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Oh, wind just started picking up again too. Might not have a whole lot of time in here before I get blown right off. Wow. How's that? Wow. Fantastic. Just in the upper lip too, which is kind of nice. I get lucky, I guess. Look at the size of that thing. Two reasons, obviously the most important reason, the time of year, fish is obviously getting all fat. Look at the, how round that is. I just can't get over it. Time of year, they get big. Great time of year to go trophy hunting, obviously. But I think also the moon just cranks these things up, man. They, they just come out here and howl. Wow. Look at that thing. Wow. Bye bye. Go back and howl some more, baby. Experts will tell you that there are actually four phases of the moon that can have a positive effect on your fishing. And they are the full moon, the last quarter, the new moon, and the first quarter. There's another one. Whoa! <laughs> Did you see that thing jump? Wow! He's got it all, baby. really hard to uh, detect strikes in these conditions because you can't keep a tight line on that bait. The wind's blowing the line so hard that uh, you can't tell whether it's a wind, whether it's a, a rock, whether it's a weed when you feel stuff. Really tough. But these fish are so aggressive that they're, they're giving you second and third chances, which is really nice too. There's one. That was hard. I thought I was coming up against a rock there. I barely even felt that. Barely. Oh, look at the size of these things. Oh my God. This may be the best day of smallmouth fishing I've ever had in terms of big fish and numbers of them. I was on that gold colored, uh, light colored gold uh, shad shape. Oh man, they are so cool. Come on, swim into the net. Yep, jump in then. Oh, look at this thing. I don't think this thing was even hooked, by the way. Look at this. That was just sitting right there. Just barely, barely got that fish in. I got lucky. Peter and I fish this body of water. This, of course, as I mentioned, is the St. Lawrence River. We fish uh, a tournament on this water every year. Have been for the last several years. And I got to tell you, it. I think the most consistent smallmouth bass fishery on the planet right now. Look at that thing. <laughs> perfect, perfect, full. Absolutely full, still chasing down food. I mean, they, these things will not stop. Will not stop. Especially during this phase. Go. Ooh, that water's cold. See ya. Today's hotspot is a large shallow flat area that Pete and I have been fishing for years with great success. The waypoint on your screen will take you right there. This area is a combination of weeds, rocks and open holes with close access to deep water. Smallmouth bass use the weeds as cover and use the rocks and the openings to feed. Wearing polarized sunglasses is a must here as you can often see the fish swimming around. 
Try drop shotting Yamamoto Shad Shape Worms and Cinco's like I did today. You won't be disappointed. For more hot spots like this one, go to fishingcanada.com. That's another nice fish. That's actually a bigger fish too. Did he ever jump? Here he comes again. Oh, nice. <laughs> hey, listen, if somebody had said to me, oh, six, seven months ago, that I'd be here late in the year fishing these fish in shallow water, relatively shallow water this time of year, I'd have said, you're crazy. Oh, that's nice. Get in there, fatty. Get in there, fatty. Get in there. Nice one. <laughs> Oh, that's a heavy fish. Oh. Wow. This thing's got length. He's got width. He's got it all, baby. <laughs> Look how long that fish is. I don't know what it is, and, and nobody's really proven it to me yet, but I gotta tell you, if you start following the moon phases when you're fishing or hunting, it's gonna make a huge difference to you. I know there's all kinds of uh, speculation out there. A lot of guys say it makes no difference at all. More importantly, it makes no difference when you have no option. In other words, you book a fishing trip and, and whether the moon is full phase moon or not, you've got to go on that fishing trip. It's your vacation time or your weekend away or whatever. But if you have the option of booking your trips around moon phases or the salooner tables and booking them in the prime time of year where trophy fish like this are a possibility, Wow, holy smokes, it makes a huge difference, folks, I'm telling you. Most freshwater fishermen will generally agree on the effects of sunlight, wind direction, barometric pressure, water temperature, and other deciding factors having a huge effect on fishing. But if you're serious about taking trophy fish, well, I'd suggest you start really paying attention to the big factor. And instead of just going fishing, go howl at the moon. Ow! To get to today's fast and furious late season Ontario smallmouth fishing, I first drove east on Highway 401 and then took the Brookdale Avenue south exit at Cornwall. I then turned left on Water Street West and finally turned right at the Great Boat Launch near the Waterfront Trail. On today's KLP, we're gonna talk about the K factor, knowledge. Uh, a lot of us are aware of moon phases. A lot of us sometimes use the lunar tables, but most of us don't pay enough attention to it. I'll be perfectly honest, I'm one of those guys. There is some weird and wacky effect that the moon has on these critters, and it really, really uh, shows itself well late in the year when they're starting to put on the feed bag and uh, put on their winter weight. If you really, really pay attention to the actual moon phase itself and plan your fishing trips around that moon phase, it's going to make a huge difference. So lunar tables are a great tool to help you land trophy fish, especially in the fall. The change in seasons, along with the proper moon phases, triggers big fish to feed and fatten up for the winter. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the Canadian Outdoors Superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip, come on, let's go. And Brintscraft Boats, dominate the waters. 